Imagine that we had a 6x6 chessboard that looked like this. In the bottom left corner, we have a black rook. Scattered randomly across the rest of the board, we have 9 white pawns in total. In this game, we will take turns moving the rook. The pawns stay stationary. Thus, not only do the pawns not move, they are also no threat to capture the rook. The rook's moves are restricted. It can either go up or right with every move. It can't go back down, and it cannot go to the left. Other than that, the rook moves normally. And for these purposes, that means it cannot jump over pawns. We will keep playing until there are no more legal moves. At that point, the person that has captured the most pawns is declared the winner. Here's the puzzle. You go first. Design a strategy that guarantees that you capture the most pawns. And to be clear, there is exactly one opening move that will allow you to do that. Any other opening move will not allow you to win the game. And while you think about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. I have a couple of hints for you. First, is that the best way of solving this game is through process of elimination with that first move. Second, you only need to fully solve out two of the opening moves to verify that there is a single winning strategy. That might not seem like much of a hint, but if you think about what it implies, it will substantially reduce the workload. Are you ready for the answer? To start out, let's think about what happens if f1 is your opening move. From here, the game is going to be a draw. There are only two pawns left to capture, f4 and f6. If one player eventually captures f4, then the next player can immediately go to f6, and that will give both of the players one pawn each, and that means we have a draw. This has an important implication for a bunch of other moves. In fact, we can eliminate the entire first row as a winning strategy for player one. That means that b1 is not a winning strategy, c1 is not a winning strategy, d1 is not a winning strategy, and you guessed it, e1 is not a winning strategy. Can you see why that's the case without fully solving out the next player's strategy? The key here is that any opening move to the first row allows the next player to move to f1. And as we just saw a moment ago, if the rook is in f1, the game is going to end in a draw. Thus, if you move the rook to b1, c1, d1, or e1, then the next player either can figure out a way to win the game, or at the very worst for him, move the rook to f1 and draw the game. Either way, that means that you are not winning. And as such, you cannot move the rook anywhere in the bottom row and expect to emerge victorious. In turn, we need to look at A column moves for a winning strategy. And while it may be tempting to go immediately to a5 and capture a pawn on the first move, that's not ultimately what you should do. Instead, you should go to a4. This is the winning strategy. Do you see why? Your opponent only has two legal moves from here. Capture the pawn on a5 and capture the pawn on b4. And despite the fact that you're giving away the first capture, this is going to work out for you. Let's look at those options one at a time. If your opponent goes to a5, they get the first pawn. But then you can immediately go to e5 and capture the next pawn. And as you can see from here, 
no matter what your opponent does, you will be able to capture the final pawn on f6. That's because your opponent only has two legal moves, up to e6 or over to f5. Either way, you move the rook to f6, you capture the second pawn, and then you win. This also explains why moving the rook directly to a5 on the first play of the game is not a winning strategy. If you were to do that, then your opponent moves to e5, and now the situation has flip-flopped, where your opponent is guaranteed to get the second pawn. What about the other case? That means that your opponent moves the rook to the right and captures the pawn on b4 instead. To seal the game from here, you can move the rook to d4. Now, whatever your opponent does, they will ultimately lose the game. Moving to d5 won't work for your opponent, because you can move to e5 and capture a pawn. Then, no matter what your opponent does, the following move for you allows you to capture the pawn on f6, and you win in a 3 to 1 blowout. Your opponent moving to d6 instead still won't let them win. Now you can move the rook directly to f6 and capture a second pawn, this time winning the game 2 to 1. There's only one remaining option for your opponent, and that's to move the rook to the right and capture the pawn on e4. Do you see how to win from here? It goes back to that diagonal move. You go up to e5 and capture one pawn, and then no matter what your opponent does, for example if they went to e6, you capture the remaining pawn and you win 3 to 2. Interestingly, all of that work also tells us why the two remaining opening moves cannot win the game. We haven't yet explicitly discussed why a2 can't win, or why a3 can't win. And yet, we've done all of the work that we need to, to be able to explain why. Do you see how that's the case? It's basically the same argument that we made with the bottom row. If you were to move to a2 or a3, then your opponent can just move to a4 on the next move. And for the reasons that we just described, getting to a4 wins you the entire game. And thus, you cannot move the rook to a2 or a3 at the beginning, otherwise you are giving your opponent the ability to control the game from there. Did you figure this one out? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.